Aloha and welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, this is uh, Thursday, August the 5th in uh, 2021, and therefore you're watching America Finding Its Way. I'm your host, Stephanie Stoll Dalton. Our show topic today um, is to review uh, what we know of the week's proceedings. Uh, regarding the select committee um, investigation into the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Um, we have assembled an, a, an informed think tech group of guests to discuss uh, the challenges and the progress and the, and the prospects uh, for um, the select committee to get to its truth and to find out what was going on and how it all happened. So I wanna uh, welcome the members of the panel. Um, there's uh, Jay Fidel, and we have Tim Apicella and then Winston Welch is with us today too. So thank you guys for all taking the time to be here and indulging me on this topic, which actually there's been um, not so much reporting uh, in, the, in in headlines uh, in, in the major newspapers. So um, I think that um, we're, we're in a situation where they're doing work, according to one of the members, uh, Representative Aguilar from uh, California, Democrat, of course, that they are intent on many, on issuing and, and invite many, many uh, people into the committee in order to get uh, as much information as they can on all of the activities and mo movements of people that surrounded the president and had anything to do with um, what was going on that day. So um, he said he had he he didn't uh, report on exactly any finding any any response to having those uh, subpoenas out, but I think we're going to be finding out who who is going to respond and who's not. So that's one of my questions that I'd like to ask Jay is if they're going to send out enormous numerous uh, subpoenas to people that were involved uh, or around or near or in, in association with the president on that day, because there's not much known about what the president was doing that day. There have been some vague references to watching television and family in and out, but there's no uh, consensus on the minute by minute activity of the president, which is what the members of the committee are intent on discovering for um, the activities that day in the White House. So do you think, Jay, that anybody that gets a subpoena who is in that that group is going to respond to it or or what? Because it hasn't been a successful approach in the past in the, in the impeachments and the other investigations. Can you opine on what's going to happen to this? Oh, I'll give you a very strong maybe. That maybe that they might, I mean, maybe they might come to the, to the subpoena. I mean, like they might, they might not. You know, but I, you know, I'd like to uh, digress for a moment. I, I keep thinking of uh, Gerald Ford. Uh, Gerald Ford getting off a plane and some somebody said, can, can he walk and chew gum at the same time? Um, and the answer was maybe. Um, and, and now we have a government uh, and we have to ask the same question. Can the government walk and chew gum at the same time? Um, and we have a media, you know, that clearly cannot. I know more about Governor Cuomo's life and his dalliances than I know what happened on January 6th. I know more about Governor Cuomo than the committee does about what happened on January 6th. It's really extraordinary how, how we have gone so far off the track. This thing started, what, 10 days ago, and all we've heard since is Governor Cuomo. And of course, don't forget Fungi Nail. We know a lot about Fungi Nail, too, if we watch MSNBC. Uh, you guys know about fungi nail, right? Um, it's a, it's a, it's one of those medical commercials they play until you're blue in the face. So you know, my my problem is, uh, you know, we, we talked to a um, a, uh, uh, a researcher uh, in in Brussels this morning, and uh, we asked her about you know how COVID was doing and how the public was doing and how the EU was doing, and it all sounded so totally rational and understanding and organized and efficient. 
um, so different than what we have in the U.S. It's really extraordinary. Um, so my answer is, I, I, I'm not sure. And I'm not sure what they're doing. I'm not sure what that committee is doing. Everything seems to be getting in the way. They started, they had one day of hearings and they gave everybody a thrill with the policemen. Um, since then, what? We don't know. We don't know about the subpoenas and we don't know about what's going on and what they're learning. Um, this thing is moving at, at a snail's pace. And I think it's because the old gum chewing problem, they, they can't do two things at once. And I include the Democrats. You know, Congress in general cannot chew gum and walk at the same time. Bottom line is uh, this does not make me feel very confident about that committee and how much evidence they're going to get and how much circus they're going to have. But frankly, after the last two weeks, after the last eight months, I really doubt we're ever going to find out what happened. Um, so the answer is maybe. Well, I think that this is very disappointing to have this stall right out of the gate. As you said, we had the drama of, of the police, and now there's very little um, in the press about actually what's going on. Did they issue the subpoenas or not? And um, there was a vague, vague, it was vague what it is that the representative um, that I mentioned said. But um, I think that uh, we have... This this relates to kind of a confidence of uh, the the people, the Americans in this in this committee effort. And uh, the latest polls, Quinniac polls, are saying that, um, and other polls, Quinniac University and other polls, that a majority of uh, Americans, fifty seven percent, say that the storming of the Capitol on January six was an attack on democracy, and that it should never be forgotten. And um, and, and, and at the same time, 38% um, that too, say that too much is being made out of the storming of the US Capitol and it is time to move on. So that is kind of a, a bipolar look at it, right? So you've got your 57 are- um, Well, time does not work uh, toward the truth here. This should have been done months ago. And uh, every day the metronome ticks by, um, the public gets more confused. And the press would love to make opinions without having the facts. And so what, what we have here is um, other interceding distractions uh, and more coming, lots more coming before we ever get to the bedrock on this. So I'm not, I'm not, I know the people want to hear it. I don't know how many polls I've received, how many um, you know, emails I've received asking me whether I wanted to see a commission. And some of them I asked until I, I, got, I, I got into a, a nausea about getting all those emails. Um, I think the public has spoken. We want a commission. We want a committee. We want an investigation. So the attorney general is not doing anything. Uh, we have these prosecutions going on, but they are not about January 6th. They're about other things. Uh, we don't know what the FBI is doing. We don't know a lot about the, uh, the prosecutions. Um, you know, uh, the, the, we have two so far that were reported, both small potatoes actually. Um, the whole thing has slipped behind the screen uh, or maybe slipped out completely. So I don't know what you other guys feel about this, but I am not happy with this committee or the commission or the ability of the government to investigate uh, what is a threat to democracy and what the people want investigated. Well, I think that, uh, that that's, that's the point. That's where we are right now. Um, but it, it is that... The Americans, um, you know, do support at 63 percent the congressional investigation of it. OK, and the, and the, the only 32 um, of the um, the Republicans do. So there's a huge disparity. Uh, surprise, surprise between um, what what it is the Republicans want and the Dems and um, that support is wide. So 29% um, support it of the Republicans and 91% of the Democrats. Totally, um, it's 63% of, of the Americans polled that, that they do support it. But it's, um, it's, it's all Democratic, 91% that want it. And it's, it's um, and the question that they asked was, do you support or oppose the congressional investigation of the storming of the U.S. Capitol on January the 6th? So uh, this is about the, the, the wishes of the American people, and, the, and, and that is supported by um, that they are interested in making it happen, but not 
at the level, I mean, it's at a high level, but if we stall and it continues to not happen, um, you know, it will die. Or what do you think, Tim, if, if we don't get more action that's shared with the public, what, what's that effect on you as uh, an American viewer and, and your peers? Well, I'm just glad I'm not in Congress because I probably would be despised by my fellow congressmen because once again, the Democrats are taking a soup ladle to a knife fight. Uh, if you're gonna investigate, please start issuing subpoenas. And unlike the Mueller report, uh, the Mueller investigation uh, two years, three years ago, uh, if they fail to respond, haul them in. Now, everyone has the right to evoke their Fifth Amendment rights for self-incrimination, but we want to see them in front of Congress in a chair saying they evoke their Fifth Amendment rights. They don't get to sit in their chair in their office going, I'm not going to answer the subpoena. I'm not going to respond because um, they just know I'm going to evoke my Fifth Amendment. No, haul their you-know-what in, sit them down in a chair and have them do that in front of uh, 25 different cameras. So, but we're not seeing that from the committee. Uh, what we're getting, I hate to say it, is an emotional warm blanket uh, testimony from Capitol Police, which they were severely beaten, both psychologically and physically. Uh, we know to what extent. We've been watching the videos for months. <clears throat> They're going to get the uh, Congressional Gold Medal today. That's true. They are getting you know, I, I understand the value of um, setting the stage of, of emotions so that you can uh, persuade the American public that this was more than just a tourist walk on a, you know, on a Sunday afternoon. This was a serious insurrection. It was a serious attack. I understand the, 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 the strategy of building up the emotions, but gosh darn it, get the subpoenas moving. Get, you know, get the accolades in the seats in front of these congressmen, in front of this, uh, this committee, and start answering questions. And again, you want, to, you want to evoke the fifth? Fine, but let us watch you evoke the fifth. Yes, and uh, with that 63% um, uh, wishing to that, that approve of, of and support for the investigation, the other question had to do with the, the, uh, the um, significant policy changes that people expect to have or not from the committee. And that is, is much more disappointing because um, that the numbers are, are high that, um, that only about 60% um, 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 are, are, well, actually it's only 30% that think that anything is gonna come out of it. And, and the 60%, the, and twice as many people think that nothing is gonna happen as a result of it. So I, I agree with you that if they don't get something to happen and get them actually in there, um, it's going to make a difference. What do you think, Winston? Are you um, expecting big things to happen? I'm not expecting big things to happen. Hopefully some truth will come out that we will have at least documented. But the, you know, I was shocked by the uh, 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 poll that came out yesterday. It was, it was in People magazine, I think. Uh, and it, it was, it, it said that 60% of Americans uh, say Donald Trump 2024 bid would be bad for the country, according to a poll. I did see that. Mm -hmm. That's um, that's 60 percent. Of course, it's 95 percent Democrats. And uh, the majority of Republicans thought this would be great. Majority of independents thought it wouldn't be good. So at least we're moving in some direction that says it's not 50 percent, at least, and or, or, or less than 50 percent. So but, you know, we're, we're like you said, it's bipolar. It's really alternate realities that we're dealing with here. And, uh, you know, either either you, you this was a patriotic um, expression of discontent or it was a murderous assault on the Capitol. And uh, obviously for for people that that are thinking rationally, these people's lives were under threat. They were only saved by valiant efforts of these police officers who absolutely deserve a congressional gold medal. Um, you know, what, what, what we're seeing though, I think is that while the committee might be a little bit seemingly silent right now, these, the machine is working. We're gonna get the testimonies and it's, are they going to show up for their subpoenas? Probably not be held in contempt of Congress, probably so. And what will that mean? Probably nothing, but the other stuff is gonna come out, the emails the uh, text, whatever was on paper. Uh, you saw where uh, the Department of Justice, uh, they, they're turning over documents now where they asked in uh, MSNBC had an article that uh, 
the DOG official had prepped uh, just GOP in six states to avoid the Biden win. Uh, you have other things that are that are slowly coming out. I think um, you know there's a, a good article about how the, uh, the the mayor of Miami is 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 prepping for a post-Trump GOP, and so he he is not beholden to the forces that were before. And and there's you know, some good uh, information on on those sorts of things that are coming up in these elections that don't show that this is just one unified. Um, party under a cult leader anymore that that slowly it's uh, it's it's cracking now is it going to happen in a day no but I think as time goes by people are exhausted and that's why they don't expect anything to happen from it and um, and you know even if the truth as 100% came out said that this was here's the the, the note from the White House is not a smoking gun it's an absolute note it's not going to change anything because those same people will say, well, good for him. He, he sent those people there and that's what they needed. But, you know, as we saw also uh, in the Reuters memo that um, we've allowed the, uh, re- they're going to allow the release of his taxes, of course, of Trump's taxes, but uh, now he's going to fight it. How long will that last? How long will the appeals last? We don't know. Yeah, but that's an important part of this. And then also we've been to Benghazi about seven times. So the the Republicans, you know, tormented the country with multiple uh, meetings and 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 commissions on Benghazi, and even with a leader in the with O'Coley, as Tim says, in the seat, um, testifying for up to twelve hours at times. And uh, we don't see any of that repeated by these people. So what is it that we know now about the vaunted Republican principles of government? I mean, they're not. Um, that, I mean, for instance, GOP has conveyed martyr status on the Ashley Babbitt, who who was killed as she charged the police in the House chamber when she entered with the rest of that violent mob. And um, and then when the announcement of two more deaths this week of our police, uh, Capitol Police officers who were in the melee, um, they, that, that was met, they gave no signs of remorse or, or certainly no honor by the Republicans. Uh, so what does this say about where they are in terms of what their principles? Many people say, oh, it's OK for these Republicans to be quiet because, you know, they are about the principles of the party, which that's what they're focusing on, not the personalities. But what about law and order? What about respect for the police? What about the um, the equal and impartial administration of justice? Where is where is any of this, Jay, anymore? Is it totally gone? The focus has to be what happened. And we're not finding out what happened. And neither are they finding out what happened. We are being distracted every day. These issues are secondary to finding the facts. And as I said before, we're making all kinds of opinions and looking into all kinds of areas before we even know what happened. I am so disappointed, uh, and I said that before, um, in the the Democrats, you know, who could have started a real investigation months ago. Um, So what we have is uh, all that soup about the uh, members of the police force and then medals and it's theater, It's, it's entertainment. It's, but it's certainly not fact finding. I want to know what happened. I mean, I think there are some people in the country want to know what happened. And we're not even close to that. We're not even close to finding out what we need to find out. Um, if they want to make public you know, disclosures and press about this, if they want to entertain us with theater, fine. <clears throat> but, but don't represent that they're actually doing an investigation for the benefit of the public when they are not. It's not happening. I'm very disappointed in the Democrats. You know, we're getting closer to uh, the November 22 elections. um, And this is very important. What's going to happen? You want my prediction? I'd be interested in how you guys feel about this. Is it's going to drag on, which is exactly what the GOP wants. They want it to drag on so they can make lies about it. They can build their own phony facts about it. And we'll never find out. And it'll be in a state of complete confusion by the time of that election. And none, none, repeat, none of the other issues will be resolved. The metronome ticks on. And none of Biden's um, 
you know, legislation. Well, I guess he had one bill way back when, but that was kind of it. Um, I, I want to see some action here. Uh, and, and I said before, I was concerned that the Democrats can't walk in, or the Congress can't walk and chew gum at the same time. I'm not sure they can either walk or chew gum. Right now, zero functionality. Yeah, and I think the, the problem that looms is also the Republicans have started their script. They, they had their script of critiques early on and now uh, of the committee and how it's not going to work. And now you're starting to hear it come back up again. So I found a whole list of what is their, their agenda and their script. I mean, and we've heard this. Uh, they're going to come back and do these attacks on the scope is too narrow. The investigation takes too long. I mean, we're certainly there. And uh, it's too soon to, to know to do a commission like this because we don't know enough and we're not getting to know enough. And, uh, and that they're saying things like there's no need to investigate past events. But all of these are things that are coming up and getting, uh, are deflecting from what it is that, that they're supposed to be to be doing, and uh, and there's a whole list, and they're all the people that are um, that were nominated for the committee, and also the other Republicans who are making uh, comments that the um, that the investigation is only meant to benefit Democrats politically, and that the Justice Department should handle the investigation. So all of this stuff is just all ready to come rolling back out of the mouths. They're talking points uh, uh, for that. So um, what? Yeah. So getting back to you, um, um, Tim, then is there any hope that this is, are you feeling po positive? Do you see that there's um, potential here or what, are you suspicious that they're falling back? What are we to make of this? Um, what to make of it? You know, I, I get a sense now, you know, this is a theory. I have just my own personal belief. I get a sense that Democrats are following an old, old playbook, a political playbook that was effective maybe back in the pre-Obama years or certainly pre-Trump years, that if you can string this thing out and then release the report in September 2021, two months before the, the 2022 election, somehow all these things will come to light and Americans will be shocked and they'll be appalled and that will force them, you know, that will persuade them to vote uh, for the Democrats. That playbook is gone. If, if, if that's their strategy, which I think it probably is, um, they better get off it. I, I couldn't agree with Jay more. Find out what you need to find out. Find out now before the Republicans can re reconstruct a narrative that you can't argue out of. And uh, they're not doing it. They're, they're stringing along because maybe they want the, the final report to come out at a devastating time just prior to the 2022 election. That's a bad strategy. Find out what you need to find out now, right now, and don't, don't hesitate. All right. Well, Winston, uh, how, how, what are you making of this situation that we're in? You know, right now, I think people are, are simply exhausted. They're fatigued from everything, COVID and, and this, this January 6th. They want to forget it. I think it... I, I could never understand why uh, when, you, you know, you go to, I would go to, to Europe and or uh, even countries that experienced civil, civil war and the people really didn't want to talk about it. It was just so traumatic on their brains that they just, they didn't want to talk about it. They just wanted to swept under the rug. It was like a bad divorce or a, just a, a, a fight and you knew that no one was going to win, that they were just, had, had, had gone to their corners and that was it. Um, I think we kind of feel the same way here and people are just like, we have talked about this ad nauseum. It's just like the people that haven't gotten vaccinated. Do you think another story about getting vaccinated or how COVID rates are affecting people who aren't vaccinated is going to help them? It's not helping at all. They're, they're not going to get vaccinated any more than they were beforehand. I don't think, I mean, it doesn't seem to be moving anything, but as the federal judge told uh, Representative Morris Mo Brooks, uh, he wanted to have immunity covered under the Westfall Act that shields employees from being sued from their words or actions in the course of their employment. And they said this was a message to Donald Trump, a co-defendant in the case that said it is not uh, that inciting an attack on Congress is not within the scope of employment of a representative or any federal employee. 
Uh, so the government sends a clear message here. No leader in our government is acting within the scope of his employment when he acts to subvert the free and fair election by getting people to go up and riot and interfere. The leaders who per perpetrated these travesties are personally responsible for their actions. At the end of the day, we will find some things. We will find the Jim Jordans if he's culpable. We'll find the other people who are culpable. But at the end of the day, we just have to hope that that people poll that we just talked about earlier just keeps going up and up and people realize this was a terrible time for America. But as uh, you know, Robert Reich had a really good editorial in The Guardian uh, just a couple days ago. Um, and it was August 3rd. And he talks that, that this was not just an aberration of a, of a lunatic uh, saying that it was uh, an election was stolen from him, that this wasn't the, the dustbin of history. He said he's turned one of America's major political parties into his own cult and cast the major political division in the U.S. as a class between those be who believe him about the election and those who do not. And that this represents the largest internal threat to American democracy to the Civil War. He's like with Jay. He says, what to do about it? Find it, fight it. The sooner, the better. So uh, we'll see what happens out of this. There's not a lot of stomach anywhere to do this because I think people just want to, like uh, Tim said, maybe it's a long strategy play. I don't know that any amount of information coming out is going to change anyone's opinion on this, but maybe the slow and steady will change the soccer moms uh, in the in the purple states. We've already done that with the Mueller report. And that 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 went out with uh, a, a nothing burger. So well, I think, yeah, but if you mentioned Benghazi. Did did Benghazi change the Democrats mind about Hillary? Probably not because it was seen as this partisan thing. So. Uh, you know, I, I think right now, let's, let's, just, let's just have the slow and steady drip so that people say, wow, this this guy was so corrupt and he had all these cronies behind him. And so maybe, maybe over time, we'll get some traction on that. But with the Voting Rights Act and all the other things that are being shoved through right now and attacks on our democracy that are still going on, yeah. I'm not hopeful um, in many ways about that. Yeah, and I, I was thinking, Jay, that maybe there needs to be some drama because as I understand it, the subpoena, you used to have huff handcuffs on if you if you would get dragged in in handcuffs if you didn't come to the subpoena. And then there then there there's a second thing that they can do to you, put you in the jailhouse. But we're and now they don't do anything and let all these people just uh, uh, and even with the Clinton trial, remember they had a person in jail who wouldn't testify. But I guess that had I that has to do with the the um, rights of the committee or the um, what it is that the committee can impose on people. But what where's how can we get that drama back so that when the subpoena goes out, it's serious? Um, do you think they're working on that maybe behind the scenes? I don't want to put you on the spot that you would know. No, I think they're in the headlights. I, I don't think they know what they want to do. I don't think they'd do anything. You know, I think that probably they have a lot of staffers researching what's in the newspaper uh, or what the FBI may deign to give them. Um, but, the, but the bottom line is subpoena practice right now is in a cocked hat. You know, this is a reality show, not a legal proceeding. Uh, they're afraid to issue subpoenas because if they issue them, the GOP will not respond and then they'll be embarrassed. And there's really nothing they can do in the face of public opinion that, quote, wants to move on. Um, so I think this is getting weaker all the time. And the drip method that uh, Winston was talking about is going to drip against the Democrats. By the time we get another six months, uh, people will be really fed up with the nothing burger and they won't want to hear another word about it. And it will have no effect uh, on the November 22 elections. Um, it's, it's really a sad story here because we, we don't we have a reality show, not a congressional proceeding. And, and let me let me also add that. I want to know which of those congressmen and senators, 147 of them, who voted against confirmation of the Electoral College voting, okay, were involved, were implicated, had, part had participated beforehand, knew about it, and did nothing. I want to know who they are. And I want to know their connections. I want to know the organizations that were, that, were, that were putting this together. We don't know that. We simply don't know it. And we're not getting any closer to knowing it. And for some reason, the Democrats don't want to find out. 
Um, you know, I, I'm, I am morally certain myself that, that a lot of those 147 guys were implicated. And um, unfortunately, and that would mean a lot to know that. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to know it. Well, Tim, what do you think? We're going to finish up here um, with uh, you and then Winston briefly. But um, what do you think we can know, Tim? Do you think this commission can pull the rabbit out with all the details, as Lynn, Liz Cheney said they wanted to do and the others? Aren't? Yeah, I, I think ultimately they can. I, I agree with Jay 100 percent and Winston 100 percent is do they have do they have the metal to do the hard job of finding the truth? Yes. The answer is yes, they can. Um, and, I, you know, we talked about this, I think, in your last show last week, is get the documents first, as if this is a legal proceeding. You're, you're in the phase of discovery. Get all those documents, subpoena the documents, and then set the people down and say, I have this document with your name on it. Did you or did you not say the following, blah, 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 and then have them respond. But apparently they're not getting the documents fast enough either. So I can't say this enough, and it, we've already said it, is... The longer this thing drips out, the more people, are, they're not going to care anymore. So let's go. And um, to answer your question, yeah, they, they could do it if they want to, if they know how to move and move quickly. All right. Well, we'll be watching for this. Winston, do you um, think we'll see something uh, shortly because they will prove their mettle? They're going to come out of a planning period and uh, get on with it? What do you think is oh. going to happen? Aren't they on vacation right now? I think everyone's kind of taking a vacation. Mentally. As we're surging, I just, as we were speaking, uh, we have a, a, a different uh, crisis. We had the highest count since the pandemic started in Hawaii with 655 new cases, 166 new hospitalizations yesterday. So uh, we've got our own issues right here that are, are very close to home. And I think in the same way that that we're working with people and living with people and love people who are don't are not understanding this virus and the truth behind the virus and protection behind it and they have you know their documentation and their sources and all of that it's the same with the whole thing about the coup and the donald and and all of that we have to we have to reach out to now that the the the, the hot fire is out but the embers are still there. We've got to reach out. We have to meet with our, our relatives, our families, our, our, our friends, our coworkers, and just try and say, I'm trying to understand you, what, what it is you, you know, you're still believing or supporting here. And let's just have a kind of an honest conversation because I, you probably have a couple good points inside of all of the trash, but the rest of it, we just have to have these honest conversations to help people understand there is truth and that if we if we can have the same shared understandings it's going to be step by steps and gradually those numbers will shift whether it's on covid or whether it's on donald trump or the and the future of our nation but we do let's start small let's start large let's start all over the place and the shoring up that we have to do it's uh, it's not going to be solved in a day it's not going to be solved in a month it's not going to be solved with this commission no kidding on how long it's going to take. But right for now, speaking of time, it's aloha time and we have to wrap it up. So um, thanks uh, to Tim Apicello, to Winston Welch and Jay Fidel for this critical conversation. I'm Stephanie Stoll Dalton, hosting for America Finding Its Way on Thick Tech Hawaii. And I thank you very much for your viewership and um, aloha. Aloha. <laughs>